Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Marvin Bird Show. I'm your host, Marvin Bird. Of course, here we believe that teachers are leaders, and as a result, we strive to give you the information, knowledge, research, skills, experiments that you can try to help you lead your students to success. We're continuing on in this episode of, of a deep dive of this information from this article in Educational Leadership, and I will I will link to that in the description section. You can check that out. Also, if you want all of the sources that I cite in this podcast, you can subscribe to the newsletter at marvinbird.com slash newsletter. So in this article, the title of the article is The Habits of Self-Directed Learners, and they cite the research from this book. It's called 16 Habits of the Mind. And I set the foundation that as leaders, as leaders, we are the architect of our environment. So in the classroom, it is your job to do what you can. Try the try the different experiments. Use the tools that you can that you have to to influence the way that students set their mind. Influence the way that they set their mind. If they if they have a a low if they have low expectations if they have a, a negative outlook on what their effort can do it's going to be very difficult for them to outperform outperform those those low expectations and so it's going to be difficult to get their best effort and so what you need to do as a teacher the challenge for you as a teacher to to help correct that thinking help correct that thinking and one way we can help correct that thinking is by emphasizing and focusing on the habits the habits of the mind there's so much that starts up here that ultimately affects actions and so what i want to give you is i want to give you information and resources and skills and experiments that you can try to 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 affect that thinking, to turn that thing around and help students set their mind in an appropriate way that's going to yield to growth. That's going to yield to growth little by little by little, and it's going to help students feel good about themselves. So last we, we talked about the, the ability of the brain to carry multiple pieces of information and 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 ultimately apply past knowledge to new situations that's the I, that's the first one that this article cited and that that's the one that I, I i started by doing a deep dive into the ability this is the habit the ability to apply past knowledge to new situations that's the habit and when you when you really when you really dive into that and, and think about that yes if all if if your students were masters of this if they if they they really adopted this habit and they just they practiced it in in their in their personal life in the classroom this is really going to set them up for success in life long after they leave your classroom if they if they get this this one applying past knowledge to new situations. Just think about that. The people who are who we view as successful, the people who we we quote and we tell stories about, they had the ability. It was a habit of theirs to do this, to apply past knowledge to new situations. And we talked about in the last episode how it, how you you have to first you 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 acquire and, and to acquire knowledge that takes, as you already know, that takes intentional steps in order to acquire knowledge. We looked at the definition of the word study. It means to acquire knowledge by, um, I think it was by, <laughs> it was uh, one of the, uh, to acquire knowledge by, why am I whiffing on this? Uh, to acquire knowledge by reading, investigation, and there was something else and I'm going to, I'll get to that. I'm going to leave that in. So the definition of study is to acquire knowledge. Okay. And there are, there are intentional ways 
that you have to do that. So it's not it, it's not something that's that's passive. And I would tell my students this when I was in the classroom, like this isn't something you're not just watching me. Your job isn't to watch me. Your job is to come into this classroom seeking something and you leave with something because each and every moment in the classroom, students should be acquiring, acquiring information, acquiring knowledge, because ultimately they're going to be expected to apply that knowledge that they acquired to new situations, to new situations. And then we talked about um, how to help students ask um, how to uh, how to help students ask questions, better questions, because we don't want them to leave the classroom with questions that are unanswered, with questions that they just chose not to ask. We don't want that. And I gave you a couple of a uh, couple of ideas to to encourage students to ask questions, and you can check that out in the previous episode. So I want to get on to some of the new stuff for today. Something significant happens. Something significant happens when when that time moves on and that student hasn't properly acquired the information that they're going to need for the next step. And, you know, it's, it's just really interesting because the world still turns, the sun comes up, and, and things seem to be normal but it's it's no insignificant thing it's no insignificant thing when a student they they sit through a lesson and they don't get what they need from that lesson because ultimately the next lesson is going to come and it's going to challenge students to reach back to that prior lesson and it's going to challenge them to see if did you really get that did you really acquire that and um, reflection, that was the other thing. Reading, investigation, and reflection. <laughs> reading and, to, uh, so the definition of study is acquired knowledge by reading, investigation, and reflection. And, and so there, there is, I told my students this as well, there's, there's always a test. You're always, you're always studying. You're always preparing yourself for a test. Because even though the sun rises and, you know, the, the birds are flying and everything seems normal, but when the student leaves that classroom and they didn't acquire, they didn't acquire what they needed, that next lesson is going to come. And then that's when accountability comes. Now, again, I use, I use that word and I know some of you out there are like, yes, accountability. Yes, 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 yes. But I, I don't, I don't mean that in a sense that, you know, we're, we're talking about those students and they, they try to get around accountability. But what, what I'm saying is that, you know, as from the student's perspective, you know, yes, the student w w was in the classroom and then, they they were in the lesson and if they say yeah oh, i got it i got it thumbs up I, I got it thumbs up well did you really get it do you do you really do you really have what what, what you believe that you have and and as students get older it, you know i believe it's appropriate to put more expectation on them to reflect that's that reflection piece like do you really have this and if you don't you got to ask questions. You got to ask questions. And there's ways that we can teach students to ask these questions that don't, you know, because we don't want to embarrass them, but we do want to give them the skills so that they can be accountable, not in a punitive way, but we just, we just, this, this is practice. This is training ground. You know, st students that we, we, sh we shelter them. We keep them in school up until they're 18 so that we can help them learn what they need in order to be responsible adults. And so accountability is part of that. So I hope that you, I really do hope that you, you, you hear my heart in that uh, just not talking punitive, but ultimately, yes, the students are, they, they are accountable. All right. So this is, and this is not groundbreaking that something significant happens when the student doesn't 
acquire that information because that's why we have prerequisites. We have prerequisites to, to get into certain classes. We have that for a reason because you need to have this in order to be successful at this next level. So when time comes on, when, as time moves on there, there comes a point where it's no longer like, wow, we can't, we cannot continue to, to reteach as I know we say reteach and, and you should reteach, find strategic ways to do that. But at some point you have to move on. So at some point you have to move on and that's, and, and I, I state that point to say that once we get students, if we can teach, if we can successfully get students to buy into this habit, get them some confidence, get them, get them some momentum that they see, oh, wow, this really works. I'm going to continue doing this. And then that's going to help because you're not, you're not, because that's just a fact of life. You know, you can only reteach. Um, you can only reteach for so long, like, because, and you all know I'm, I'm hearing the amens out in the crowd. Yeah. You can only reteach for so long because you've got this curriculum. I've got, I've got to get through this by pacing guide. Oh, my colleagues are they're ahead of me. I got, I got to get going. That's, that is just a fact of life. That's a fact of life. It's a challenge that every teacher has to deal with. Now, I, what, what I want, what I want to also tell you this as well, because like I, I told you, I'll never forget what it's like to be a teacher. That's, you know, from a student's perspective, perspective, that's no reason or excuse to interrupt class. Okay. If a student didn't get what they need to get, um, definitely that's, that's up to you as a leader to, to help problem solve. You can pull that student to the side and, and come up with a plan to get that student caught up so that they can get what they need. They can acquire what they need and they're going to have to do their part in order to do it. And on the other side, ladies and gentlemen, I got to say this as well, because I, I know I'm pressing some buttons, but on the other side, you know, as a leader, as a leader, we always look at ourselves first to, to, and ask ourselves, Hmm, is there, is there anything that I could possibly adjust? Is there, is, are there adjustments on my part um, th that are needed? So that's good feedback for you to have. <laughs> that's good feedback for you to have. I love you. I'm a teacher, but I'm also a leader as well. So we have to, we have to look at ourselves. We have to do that reflection as well. But yes, that, that's no excuse for a student to interrupt your classroom. It's no excuse right? That's because they didn't get it. We can, we can come to the side. We can problem solve. We can do what we need to do in order to help you get caught up, Johnny. But no, I cannot have you interrupt my class. Let's, let's solve this problem. And let, let me show you the importance of this habit and how successful people, you like basketball. Let me show you how, how let me show you what, let me show you what Kobe Bryant said about preparation and, and some of his his morning routine and some of the habits that drove him to be one of the greatest to be in that conversation so so what are some things that we can do in order to really help students buy into this idea of making it a habit to apply past knowledge to new situations by really buying into that and i want to i want to offer you this Number one, practice, practice, practice. I often told students that if you want points, go play a video game. If you want points, go play a video game. And what I was trying to do is I was trying to get them out of the mindset of, I just need the points. I just need this to look good. So I can have at the end of the semester, I can have a really good Christmas or just you know, so my parents can just get off my back. My parents have my phone. I want my phone back. I just need the points. Give me the points. I'd say, no, go play a video game because this is about, this is about so much more than just the points. I tried to get them to focus on the effort, try to get them to focus on the learning. And this is, this is something to think about when it comes to your philosophy as it relates to grading. Your philosophy as it relates to grading. Um, I, in my journey, 
first of all, there there is research. There is research out there that that does state that allowing students to practice without the risk of th of, of threatening their grade that is a good thing that is a good thing and i know i know especially those of you in high school middle school as well probably are thinking well if the students know that they don't have to do this assignment then they're not they they may not give their best effort and then they're just they're going to interrupt my class because the grade is the carrot i hear you i hear you and that's why i can remember in my career, I was in a room, like when I first, I was in a room of teachers who they were on board with standards-based grading. And I'm, I'm sitting in there listening. And primarily these are, I'm sitting in a room of elementary teachers. I'm high school teacher. And I'm just hearing about this. And I'm thinking about my students, my lovely students. And I'm thinking about, you know, those students who required a lot of my energy in order to help redirect them as I led them to success. And you're, and what I'm hearing is they don't have to, these are assignments, but they don't have to, they don't have to do them. And then ultimately <laughs> I, that didn't sit well with me. It didn't sit well with me. Just number one, you know, as, as a teacher, you know, you, you're stepping in my classroom and, and, uh, and, and taking away, taking away a power that I once had, you know, that, that kind of like, ugh, that kind of like, ouch, that kind of hurt me. I didn't like it. And so long story short, ultimately the district didn't adopt it. And I think it was for that reason, because there were been a lot of teachers like myself saying, Hey, you know, there, there's another side of this. And then I know as I'm talking about this, some of you are, are just want to jump through the screen, jump through your phone to, to get at me and tell me why I'm wrong about standards-based grading. I'm just being honest and I'm telling you how I felt when I first heard it. So what I ultimately did was I, I went to a love and logic conference. Um, and it was, well, first of all, I went to a love and logic session for parents and, you know, we kind of had to change some things because our children were getting older and we had, you know, we had to come up with like, what is our strategy? What are we going to do here? And then I went to a love because I loved it so much. I adopted some of those practices in my classroom. And then later on, I went to a love and logic session for teachers. But one, one thing that really changed me was, so we use sis. Tyler sis and often there there were these yellow whenever I put in the zero the the cell turned yellow in my grade book and I had just had so much yellow there was just a sea of yellow I was swimming in a sea of yellow because I had so many students who just they didn't turn in their assignments and um I realized that I cared more than the students I realized I cared more than the students. And that was why around February every year, that's why I was on the verge of burning out because I cared more than the students. And Love and Logic, it really taught me to be a better leader, to be a better leader and also take care of myself. And so ultimately what I did was I had too many assignments. I admit it, I, had, I, had, I was giving too many assignments. So what I did was I, I still offered the assignments, but I just didn't, I just didn't grade all of them. I still offered the same amount of assignments, but I just didn't grade all of them. And the way that I put it to students was, Hey, you got to make a decision, but I will tell you that students who complete these additional assignments, they tend to do better on the test. So that's it. I, in that, in that regard, I emphasize decision-making and that's the second point. Number one, practice, 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 give them opportunities to practice in, in ways, in, in ways that, that limit the risk to their grade. And then number two, emphasize decision-making. Yes. I gave them these, I gave them all of the assignments that I usually graded, but I didn't grade all of them, but I put the ball in their, their court. I gave them the power to make a decision and and I and I encourage them to think about the decision 
because I gave them that information that, hey, students who do these assignments, they tend to do better on the test. Just give me that information. You make the decision that you think is best for you knowing that information. And then the, the other thing that I want to give you is I want to challenge you to, to come up with some prior knowledge metaphors, prior knowledge metaphors. You know, there, there's so much power. There's, there's so much power in your voice, in your messaging. So if you're, if you're intentional, about the things that you say, you can make what you say very memorable. You can make what you say stick in their minds. You can make what you say just ring, just you can make those words just echo in their head. Like they're, they're just thinking about it. Like they, they may, their parents may say something and then boom, like it'll just hit you. Oh yeah, that's right. Dr. Bird said something very similar to that. And it's just, it's that, that's what you want. That's what you want as a leader. So prior knowledge metaphor, here's mine. Prior knowledge, prior knowledge is the, the tools you need to build a bridge to cross over a river you haven't come to yet. Once again, prior knowledge represents the tools you need to build a bridge to cross a river you haven't come to yet. Think about that. Like, you put that, you put that out there, you're consistent. You make it a habit to, to, you make it a habit to state that, to put that out there in your environment. Because once again, you're the architect of your environment. You put that out there and then the kids are going to, they're going to remember, they're going to remember and they're going to hear that. They're going to hear that even before you, even before you say it, when you know it's a pro, oh, it's appropriate for me to pull this out. And they're going to say, oh, I know what you're going to say. Yes, my prior knowledge represents the tools I need to build a bridge. I haven't across a river. I haven't yet come to. They're going to they're going to know it. And once you get to that point, that's gold. That's gold. That's how we help students to build these habits. And it doesn't happen overnight. And you know what? In, in certain situations, it's not you're not going to see the fruits of your labor during your class. But I encourage you to keep doing what you can. Keep getting up. Oh, that tool didn't work. I'm going to get some more tools because that student's going to know that, hey, I didn't give up on you. I kept trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. And down the road, that student's going to remember. They're going to remember you kept trying. They're going to recall the things that you said, the efforts that you went through in order to be the architect of your environment. That's going to stick with them. And that's not only going to help them to be a better student, it's going to help them to be a more responsible adult long after they've left your classroom. I guarantee it. Keep swinging. Keep trying. Keep experimenting. All right. So that's our that's our time for today. I encourage you. I encourage you to go to marvinbird.com. Check out check out the check out the blogs, the those posts. They're going to take about 5 minutes of your day to go through quick and easy professional development also on marvinbird.com. Please consider um, supporting the message, marvinbird.com, support the message that teachers are leaders. There's a number of ways that you can support this message. Help us to continue putting out this content because I believe that teachers are leaders. You believe that teachers are leaders as well. And so we want to get this to as many people as possible. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. And until we meet again, please don't forget that teachers are leaders.